In this movie we're going to have a look at creating shadows and placing them on the elevations. Uh, there's already a movie on that on this DVD, but what we're going to deal with here is transparent shadows, so the shadows won't block out totally the areas that they're covering. I'll start by switching to an axonometric view of a sort, and if I right mouse click in this window, the 3D window settings pop up and I can go down to 3D projection settings and click on that and here we want to be looking at the elevation so I'm going to position the camera set the side view and set the parallel projection to an elevation and we can put the shadows wherever we want I'm just going to put it to the left a little bit and I might change the altitude to maybe 45 degrees and I'm going to accept that push OK so this is our elevation, so I can obviously determine what I want to see in this window and I'm going to change it to the internal engine and shading and vectorial hatching, I want to tick off transparency in shading to off so that we can pick up the shadows off the window as well as the walls and the vectorial sun shadows, I'm going to turn the contours off and just push OK and it renders all of our shadows. So to pick up the shadows I have to go to the marquee tool, select the marquee tool and then go to this toolbar and pick the last option in the flyout palette which is a two-dimensional rectangular marquee. Draw it over our 3D view of our model and go to edit, copy or control C or Apple C. As we're copying elements from inside the marquee, it's asking us what do we want to copy, scale drawing is fine, construction element, we don't want any of the construction elements, so none, shadows, edges and polygons, we could use polygons or polygons with edges, but I don't want the edges, we don't want any lines around the edge of the shadow, so I'm going to choose just polygons, and in this case we're just planning to pick up the shadows as they appear on the elevation. I'm going to set up to calculate split, calculate split polygons. When we capture the shadow from invisible objects hidden behind our building, we'll change the setting for that and we'll have a look at that later. And of course we're going to choose frameless. We're going to click OK. I'm going to turn the marquee off, switch to our presentation sheet and turn off the grid zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to quick paste. Now we can see that our shadows are pasted onto our elevations and if you can see them on top of the elevation everything's correct. Occasionally they are pasted behind objects where you can't see them in which case you've just got to grab them and or move them out to a white space somewhere say 10 meters and confirm the position, right mouse click, then I select all the fills and then right mouse click and change the display order and we're going to bring them to the front. This means that all of our shadows will be sitting in front of all the other objects that are down below which make up our building. The next step is not absolutely necessary but sometimes we've got a lot of objects that make up the shadows. So it's a good idea to make that a selection. So I'm just going to go to Window, Palettes, Selections and with our shadows selected I'm going to go to the little magic button on the side and say add selection and I'm going to call this shadows. That way if I do select the shadows I can just click on that and we can select all the shadows just in one click. So I can do future edits without too much problems. So I'm just going to select those again. So now I'm going to move them back by 10 meters or snap them to a relevant point. So at the moment we've got our shadows displaying on the elevation but because these shadows are simply solid fills they're sort of covering all the finishes and the colours on the image fills that we've used previously. So what we're going to do is select the shadows and I'll simply change them to a contrasting colour so we can see them quite easily now. Now to be able to see through those shadows we should probably set up a fill 
that is a transparent fill. So I'm just going to go to Option, Element Attributes and Fill Types and I'm going to click New. From the New dialog box I'm going to click a Solid Fill and call it Shadow Fill and then I'm going to add a space at the start of the text there so it appears on the top of the shadows list. Now I can set up the transparency of this fill. This area here, which says translucency, allows us to set up the percentage of transparency of this particular fill. There seems there seems to be a little bit of confusion with there seems to be a, there seems to be a little bit of confusion with the, with this word translucency here, because translucency obviously means how transparent a object is. So you would assume that translucency of zero would mean that it would be a fully opaque fill and translucency of one of 100 would be completely invisible. In actual fact it's exactly the opposite so this word really should be opacity. But at the moment we're just going to set this at 50% and you can see as we adjust the transparency or the translucency of this fill. Now the pattern or the screen pattern is automatically updated so we don't have to create any new patterns. I'm going to set this to be drafting cover and cut fills and I'm going to click OK. So now I'm going to pick my selection, my shadows, and then I'm going to change this to the shadow fill. But if we have a look at it, it's actually not transparent at all. Now the trick with the see-through fills is that you actually have to have the background fill pen set to transparent. I'm just going to select that, make it transparent. Now that fill becomes transparent. The front color of the fill can be absolutely anything and I might set it to something quite dark, maybe dark blue. So the shadow appears a little bit bluey. The background as you see is set to transparent. And I just have to close this box. And here's our semi-transparent shadows. You can see that the image fills are visible. They cover the window because in the 3D axonometric we set that to not to have any transparency in the display. You can then manipulate the colour of the fill to achieve the sort of look that you're looking for. Quite often the simply dark black colour looks a little bit bland or gloomy. Adding a little bit of colour can actually make it a little sunny. So I'm just using a brown fill there and it looks a bit sunnier. So that's the semi-transparent shadows.